Oklahoma Department of Veterans Affairs now has as one of its divisions the State Approving Agency. This agency is responsible for monitoring and enabling Oklahoma's GI Bill education benefits. The GI Bill is a key component in a service member's transition from active duty service to civilian life. It affords the beneficiary the opportunity to develop skills that meet the needs of their chosen career path while working at their own pace and at the school or educational institution of their choice. Inquiries concerning training opportunities at Oklahoma's institutions are frequently made by beneficiaries during education benefit briefings. The ODVA SAA is always happy to share with beneficiaries what programs are available from our state's educational partners. The GI Bill began as the Servicemen's Readjustment Act of 1944, widely known at that time as the GI Bill of Rights. Drafted by American Legion National Commander Harry W. Culmery, it avoided what had previously been seen as confusion over veterans' benefits. Specifically, its author and others feared another bonus rebellion where thousands of veterans, angry about confusing and inadequate benefits following World War I, marched on Washington in protest. Marchers were beaten and shot. Some died. Even at that time, the GI Bill offered a range of benefits to GIs from loans to unemployment assistance, with tuition and fees being more or less an afterthought. Still, almost immediately, the education benefits had the greatest participation. All of this was tax-free and still is today. The GI Bill is available to active duty service members as well as many veterans, military spouses, and military dependents. At its foundation, the GI Bill is an earned benefit, active duty or reserve time earned entitlement. Completing a full three-year service commitment earns the full value of the benefit. Less service time typically means less benefits. Recipients must either still be serving or have an honorable character of service. This means that student veterans using the GI Bill have already demonstrated themselves as high-quality persons. The GI Bill includes 36 months of education and training with tutoring assistance, help with books and supplies, housing assistance, and more. Why 36 months? 36 months equates to four years of college or one to two years of trade school followed by OJT or apprenticeship training. Any training done uses the benefit. One day of full-time school uses one day of benefit. The different chapters of benefit represent different legislation actions introduced over time, each trying to improve on the last version by offering better services, enhanced oversight, and reflecting the changing needs of the population. The most recent GI Bill, the Forever GI Bill, was not a new benefit. Instead, it was an augmentation and improved the existing benefits. The Forever GI Bill technically named the Culmery Act, earned its name by a provision that ensured post-9-11 benefits would no longer expire until they were actually used. In the SAA division, we're especially fond of what's called the Oklahoma Amendment, which expanded independent study to career and technology centers. There are currently five chapters of benefits which are in active use today. Each chapter offers different strengths for beneficiaries facing different situations. Chapters 30, 1606, and 33 are general use benefits, intended to be available to all service members. Chapters 35 and 31 are special use benefits, only available under stipulated conditions. Again, harkening back to history, with the sweeping benefits of the GI Bill came the concerns of potential abuse, worries over the difficulty of oversight, and managing the programs in states with disparate education and employment laws. Without the internet or massive expenditures, centralized oversight of a federal program of this size would not have been manageable. Staffing would be required within reasonable traveling distance of schools and of employers across the nation. Staff would also need to be trained to understand how the GI Bill would interact with state law. Rather than investing in federal agents with overwhelming travel and training requirements, it was determined to be more effective to assign oversight to the states themselves and allocate the necessary funding to ensure that the states had no reason to decline the duty. And so, state approving agencies, or SAAs, were born. The Oklahoma State Accrediting Agency was formed in 1953 to serve as Oklahoma's SAA. It is believed that the inclusion of the word accrediting, rather than approving in the agency name, 
was due to a misunderstanding of the organization's purpose. OKSAA was notably the only SAA in the nation to be dubbed an accrediting agency. This misnomer was retained for 65 years. In 2018, the Oklahoma State Accrediting Agency statutory authority was not renewed. And so, beginning June 2018, the agency entered a one-year sunset period. Of course, with $134.5 million in GI Bill revenue going toward the training of over 12,000 beneficiaries, with all this spread among 140 facilities, the sunset of that agency raised genuine concern about the possibility of interruptions to beneficiary and school payments. However, those were quickly proved to be unwarranted. Following the conclusion of the sunset period, the duties of the SAA were transferred to the Oklahoma Department of Veterans Affairs by Governor Kevin Stitt. The transition from OKSAA to ODVA SAA began in earnest well in advance of the actual transfer of authority. ODVA leadership, along with newly hired staff, met to begin transition planning. Staff members worked extensively to ensure that an unbroken chain of custody of all documents and data was assured and that no knowledge was lost during the transition. Oklahoma's annual cooperative agreement with the VA was continued uninterrupted. ODVA SAA began operations in July 2019. Its first official action was to correct the agency's name to the state approving agency. A new team was developed to manage this newly forged ODVA SAA. A premium was placed on skill and expertise. The team would include an expert in agile operations and software development with direct experience in running federal veterans educational programs. A nationally recognized expert in GI Bill education benefits with additional expertise in career tech and Oklahoma's training institutions. An expert in transition from the military to school and from school into the workplace. A legislative expert with expertise in veterans programs and an experienced school certifying official with well-honed knowledge of VA education benefits. Once the team was assembled, the ODVA SAA was ready to take on its new mission. The mission of the SAA is stipulated in Title 38 of federal law, and parameters are assigned each year through an annual agreement with the VA. Approval actions include detailed reviews of an institution's catalogs, handbooks, and other documentation, the institution's facilities and structure credentials, and other data to ensure Title 38 requirements are met and educational quality is assured. Technical assistance is individualized support provided to institutions and beneficiaries to help ease the use of benefits. Outreach includes broad training and communication provided to both institutions and the community to reach the widest possible audience. Liaison activities involve collaboration with government veteran, and educational entities to resolve issues, identify training needs, and share best practices. Compliance surveys, otherwise known as audits, are completed each year as assigned by the federal VA. At the planning stage for the new agency, four goals were established. Reducing paper operations, building online digital applications, and easing processes for our partner institutions in the future. By abandoning virtually every form and process used by the predecessor agency, as it turned out, the future was more near than expected. ODVA SAA has never actually processed a paper application. The number of hard copy documents the SAA has mailed can be counted on a single hand. Online forms are a reality for all operations, both internal and external. The most time-consuming form an external party will be asked to complete will take them no more than three minutes. Our partner institutions are not asked to do more or provide more than is required by law. That leaves us the final and fourth goal for the future, the governor's call for digital transparent government agencies. By mid-July of 2019, the ODVA SAA had begun its full transformation to digital operations, and by December, version 1.0 of a full digital transformation was complete which will be surveyed in a moment. Even so, we're well into the development of 2.0 versions of our systems, which will make our data even more transparent to Oklahoma stakeholders, and thus will allow the arcane rules and regulations of Title 38 law to become even more accessible to lay people. And this will also allow greater accountability and efficiency in ODVA operations consistent with the governor's call. 
Indeed, let's take a very brief look at how version 1.0 operates. You can't manage what you don't track. And so, we track everything. Every approval action, compliance survey, outreach event, liaison with external partners, even technical assistance, whether verbal or email, whether to schools or the greater community. Everything is systematically tracked in a mesh of carefully curated digital data. How is this done? Our 1.0 system is distributed among three components, our digital document index, operations cases, and workflow card system. We'll cover these briefly, but let's start with this last item. Our workflow card system creates a virtual workplace where ODVA SAA staff members can share and work on tasks together on specialized boards. A shared team board reflects the real-time state of all of our current and upcoming activities. So too does each team member have a personal workspace. Every approval action, interaction with the public, or other task is assigned a task card, allowing each project to be monitored from start to finish. Information isn't lost, and one person can easily begin where another leaves off, allowing for efficient collaborative effort and for full searchable archiving capabilities useful in reference and quality control. Next is our Digital Document Index, or the DDI, which is home to all of our intellectual property. Approval actions, metrics, policy guidance, and everything else that we can use or create from day to day is referenced by the DDI in one curated, easy to access index space. Using this digital document index, one can find a myriad of carefully crafted, hypertext linked forms and documents, each designed for use in carrying out the ODVA SAA responsibilities. On the DDI, you can find our very first form, the ODVA SAA Veterans Benefits and Transition Form, which helped Oklahoma schools come to compliance with Public Law 115-407. This law limits schools' ability to penalize beneficiaries when the VA is late issuing payment. Although Oklahoma was perhaps the last state to begin work to assure compliance due to agency transition, because of the effectiveness of our digital forums and the earlier partnerships with the veterans' educational community, the ODVA SAA was among the first states to complete the task, with 100% of schools signing an attestation of compliance, which data was all automatically captured and duly collated in the 1.0 data system. Indeed, the use of automated, externally facing internet forums is ubiquitous in ODVA SAA operations. The community's favorite forms are those that have to do with the approval process. From the initial application to final approval letter, our forms assist and guide the user through the approval process. Automated features like built-in percentage calculators further ease the workload of school officials and state approving officers. The most difficult tasks that were once assigned to schools, such as the identification and calculation of program data, is now handled quickly and efficiently using custom software which talks to internal systems. Even the most challenging tasks, such as compliance surveys, have been painstakingly distilled down to their data elements and converted to a series of cloud-based spreadsheets and to online forms which assist the staff in identifying errors and even in writing highly detailed letters. For example, a human didn't actually write this approval letter. It was fully generated by ODVA SAA systems and from data a staff member entered into an online form. Finally, our operations cases offer step-by-step -step guidance at each staff member's fingertips. Highly detailed processes are broken down into easy-to-follow steps with context, definitions, related documents, and annotations made available for ease of use. Alternate paths and optional processes are clearly outlined for staff and training. Hyperlinks tie the various operations cases together for end-to-end -end process completion. All operations cases are automatically indexed to their respective procedures. Our current operations case document measures 33,337 words. For a comparison, the well-known novella The Time Machine by H.G. Wells runs just barely over 32,000 words. We expect the addition of more operations cases to at least double the size of this document so as to encompass all the state agency's responsibilities and activities, which in turn will make training and quality control all the more efficient. When all operations components are duly coordinated, 
Another component of operations becomes available, analysis. So, let's move to a quick overview on this matter. Here, for example, our data immediately tells us that although the focus of GI Bill educational benefits has historically been placed on our institutions of higher learning, labeled IHL, a casual glance shows we actually have a much greater number of non-college degree institutions which participate in these benefits. From our data, we can also see a trend toward summertime being a popular time for approvals. This coincides both with school officials having a bit more free time and with new yearly catalogs being published. Data analysis can also tell us when something out of the ordinary has happened. In this case, we see a spike in approval actions in March. This coincides with our schools transitioning to online training and modifying their grading policies as a response to COVID-19. Because changes to the grading policies could affect payment, schools needed to submit those for approval. As a result, the ODVA SAA, in a single month while working remotely, handled an approval volume greater than the entire prior six months combined without delay or error. This accomplishment is even more notable in light of the fact that staff members were handling a substantially increased volume of technical assistance calls and were continuing to process their regular workload of compliance, outreach, and liaison activities. Leading up to the ODVA management of SAA duties, Concerns repeatedly were raised that the 140 institutions active at the time would somehow see their approvals lapse. Such concerns were overblown. As this dynamic time series graph shows, 146 facility approvals have been completed by ODVA SAA, again with IHL's second to other non-certificate granting training institutions and facilities. Even beyond this subset of 146 approved facilities, there are currently a total of 183 facilities active in Oklahoma. As it turns out, 132 of them are serving Oklahoma's 12,182 military-connected students receiving GI Bill education benefits today. Those schools and their students have helped to bring $158.2 million of GI Bill educational benefits into the state. However pleasing these numbers may be, there is still more to be done. Our data clearly shows that while the approval of colleges and trade schools has been strong, on-the-job training, apprenticeship, and flight programs are all potential areas of growth to be targeted during our outreach efforts. Such outreach efforts are also continually focused on our career tech partners. We routinely participate in career tech's annual conferences and provide regular, individualized training to their financial aid staff members via telephone and Zoom. Again, the metrics speak for themselves. When COVID-19 struck, it was Career Tech's staff who moved quickly to stay in compliance by requesting approval of their policy adjustments and temporary closures. By the end of the month, Career Tech's accounted for two-thirds of our total approval actions for March. Still, there is much to do. Bridges must be mended and new partnerships forged. Nearly half the state's population doesn't have a Career Tech with approved programs nearby. Still more do not have the opportunity to use their GI Bill benefits for the program of their choosing. Our outreach efforts are focused on correcting those deficiencies. We've done the easy part by making the approval process fast, straightforward, and painless. Now, we're working on the hard part by rebuilding relationships, putting old fears to rest, and redeveloping trust so that GI Bill beneficiaries can get the most out of their benefits at the nation's best career and technology school system. Although career tech is unabashedly our greatest priority, they are just a part of a much greater whole. Each approval that we process may address many different types of approval actions, from address changes to new programs of study. In the past, approval actions were typically all or none affairs that took months to complete and would be massive endeavors. One notable example used in training is a 29-page long document that only changed a single line item but failed to indicate exactly which item had changed. Given that we manage hundreds of approvals, each containing many, sometimes dozens, of reporting documents, it was hard for the school, hard for the SAA staff, and very hard for the VA. The hallmark of ODVA SAA's processing is carrying too quick and easy incremental changes to an approval. If a facility adds a new program, we review just that program. Then we tell the VA about just that program, and let them know that nothing else has changed. 
It is this service-oriented, minimalist mindset that has catapulted the ODVA SAA in just one year from an empty office with only a stack of post-it notes to a fully functional state agency, one that has navigated every obstacle while continuing to climb yet higher levels of productivity and effectiveness. Many have already attested to our reimagining of what the SAA can do. Indeed, we were taken aback that so many took time to send email and letters to us about how much they appreciated the new, digitally-based SAA. In light of such responses, one cannot help but think some genuine, long-standing difficulties have been removed for serving those on the front lines of institutions managing GI Bill educational benefits. Earlier was mentioned Governor Stitt's call for digital, transparent government agencies. As we transition into our second year, the ODVA SAA will also transition into the second generation of our systems. Cloud-based spreadsheets are being transitioned to databases, our forums are getting smarter, and our systems are becoming ever more tightly integrated. But we aren't going to check off the governor's goal of digitalization off our list just yet. There are many exciting technologies we plan on bringing to bear in serving our state's veterans, its educational institutions, and the greater needs of Oklahomans. In closing, when the ODVA SAA made its initial presentation to the meeting of the Oklahoma Veterans Education Specialist Association, we made a very few simple promises. The application will be online and it will take less than three minutes. School officials won't have to fill out any spreadsheets, won't need to photocopy anything, and certainly won't need to worry about collecting and mailing piles of paperwork. In fact, no accredited Oklahoma educational institution will be asked to do anything that isn't expressly required by federal law. As always, the ODVA is here to help our veterans in many ways, but its SAA division is working to give Oklahoma schools and veteran students the best experience possible when it comes to the GI Bill. We continue to ensure that Oklahoma's certifying officials will receive the training that they need, get real answers to their questions, and receive immediate, fair service. These are our simple promises. We're going to keep them.